comrades, disabled people against cuts, DPAC, are delighted to be here today showing support to our trade union allies. DPAC recognises the vital role that trade unions play in resisting oppression and fighting for the 99%. And I want to start by congratulating postal workers in Bridgewater, Somerset, who last week walked out without an official ballot in defence of disabled worker Andrew Newton. And comrades, they won. Andrew was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, but instead of helping him back to work, the Royal Mail bosses kept him on sick leave so long his pay was stopped. Workers ended the walkout only after managers promised to negotiate seriously about getting Andrew back to work. So Deepak applauds the CWU union members for their fantastic show of solidarity. And I know the CWU has said they'll support the Bridgewater rep, Dave Chappell, if management go for him, as they've indicated they will in retaliation. And I know Dave will be able to count on the support of everyone here today if that happens. DPAC was set up in 2010 to oppose the brutal and deliberate attacks on disabled people being carried out in the name of austerity. Since then, it's been one long, hard, continuous fight as the Tories launched an all-out assault on everywhere area of disabled people's lives, from education to social care to benefits to housing, the list goes on. And all of it justified by blaming us, by saying that we're benefits grounders and creating a rise in disability hostility. The very people the government promised to protect, in their words, the most vulnerable, are the ones that have been hit the hardest. Research has shown that disabled people with the highest support needs, the most disabled people, are being hit on average 19 times harder than anyone else. And at the same time as they're telling us that we need to get off benefits and work our way out of poverty, they're simultaneously cutting disability employment support through changes to access to work and making plans to cut the working tax credits that disabled people unable to physically work any more hours a week rely on. The UK is now the first country in the world to be investigated by the United Nations for grave and systematic violations of disabled people's rights. The Tories seem determined to take us back to the days where deaf and disabled people were locked up and shut away from the rest of society. Chronic underfunding in social care has resulted in a system where disabled and older people are treated, I would say, worse than dogs, trapped indoors without access to food, water or the toilet for hours on end. And we recently heard about a woman in Coventry. After her social package hours were cut, she died in a house fire because she couldn't get out without assistance. And then we've also witnessed the terrible human cost of welfare reform and the toll of deaths directly linked to benefits steadily rises. Like Moira Drury, a woman who'd overcome domestic violence and severe disability to work as a nurse, bring up three daughters as a single mother, a woman suffering from a combination of illnesses including cancer, and a woman tragically sent to her grave early as a result of the stress caused when her benefits were stopped for seven months due to a processing delay. Or Michael Sullivan, a man with severe mental illness who despite evidence from three doctors was found fit for work and his benefits were stopped. Michael hanged himself. Some of these stories reach the papers, but many of them don't. And it's not just the actual deaths. It's also the thousands of disabled people who are left struggling, choosing between heating or eating, not knowing how much longer they can continue, and wondering how this is happening in the sixth richest nation in the world. And then just when we thought things had got bad enough, the Tories went and got re-elected in May, with a mandate to slash another 12 billion from the welfare budget. After five years of hard campaigning, I can tell you the thought of another five years with yet more cuts to come was almost too much to bear. But Deepak realised we had no choice. We had to regroup. We had to come back fighting harder and stronger than ever before. And that's what we've been doing since May. In June, Deepak members in wheelchairs attempted to storm the House of Commons chamber during Prime Minister's questions. <laughs> Osborne increased the amount of ILF grant funding being handed down to local authorities, although the ILF is really not over yet. In July, we held our balls to the budget protest, hanging the 10 metre banner opposite Parliament, literally sticking two fingers up to Osborne, and pelting down the street with multicoloured plastic balls, giving disabled people something to smile about as they prepared to lose 30% of their employment and support allowance through the rag cut. 
Since Atos fled the contract and won the work capability assessment, we've targeted Maximus, the company who took it over, to try to toxify their brand the same way. And last week we found out that their share prices have dropped 22 points. <laughs> The comrades, the harder we all fight back, the more our enemies will try to divide us, finding ever new ways to turn us against each other, whether it's setting workers against benefit claimants or viciously scapegoating refugees and migrants. And now we're seeing the despicable vilification of junior doctors fighting to protect our NHS with these attempts to raise terrorism fears over their strike action. And it's important we don't let ourselves be divided. Solidarity is the fundamental building block of resistance. A DPAC, two of the allies who've shown us the most solidarity and support have been Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell. Since 2010, they were constantly at our side, time after time, alongside us, often in the rain, speaking out against injustices against disabled people. As the rest of the Labour Front bench competed with the Tories on who could be the toughest on welfare, Jeremy John and also Andrew Fisher spoke out against injustice and encouraged us to carry on. And we did carry on, because disabled people don't have another five years to wait for a Labour government, because too many of our brothers and sisters will be dead by then or have lost too much to ever recover. DPAC is doing what we can now, not just talking but taking action, to try to stop the Tories, and we see civil disobedience as a legitimate way to resist, inju resist injustice. In <laughs> In 1918, the Scottish Socialist John McLean said, No human being on the face of the earth, no government is going to take from me my right to speak, my right to protest against wrong. Anti-trade union legislation and attempts to silence the unions are wrong, just as the cuts are wrong. And it is right that united we disobey and we resist. Yeah. Solidarity. Yeah.